so I guess we'll begin a few minutes late. So welcome. Um, <laughs> so there aren't a lot of people here, but uh, and I prepared jokes just in case there weren't a lot of people here, and and so unfortunately I'm going to have to actually tell them because there aren't a lot of people here. Um, so there doesn't have to be a lot of people here for this to be epic, right? Because how many people were at the death of Julius Caesar, for example? Well, just six people. And uh, Archimedes, he was all by himself in the bathtub when he made his epic discovery. So just because there aren't a lot of people here doesn't mean that this isn't, hopefully won't be great. Welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Amanda Maxim. I'm a graduate student here and I'll talk to you about chaos in the solar system. That looks really oblique. More spherical there. So this image was taken by the Apollo 17 crew. Um, and it's one of the very first images that we have of the Earth as a whole as seen from space. The first images were taken, I think, in the 50s. And this one wasn't taken until 1972. And it has become an icon of the 21st, for the 20th century uh, as, as an image. And I'm standing on the Earth now, and I know in my head that we're moving. But I can't feel that motion. It's not like I'm on a carnival ride and I can feel the, the earth moving up and down or something like that. But there are many clues and many things that I can observe on a daily basis that indicate to me that the earth is indeed in motion. So some of those daily or regular cycles that I can observe. One is the sunrise and the sunset. So each day the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Um, maybe I'm stuck in my office and so I don't, I don't actually get a chance to observe that every day, but I've seen enough during my lifetime to know that that's, that's indeed the case. What else? Well, the stars move. If I'm lucky enough to be outside at night, I might be able to see something like this. So here's a, a time-lapse photo of the stars moving through the sky at night. And you can see, this is the center point here. I'll try to turn the lights on so we can see the photos better. So you can see the stars rotating about that center point. And that center point is where Polaris is, or the North Star. And uh, if, you, if you're wondering, you can tell sort of how long this time-lapse photographer uh, left his shutter open. And if you're curious about that, you can ask me later. Um, just by looking at the length of those star trails. And so the stars work something like the sun, that they rise in the east and set in the west if they're far away from the North Star. If they're near the North Star, they'll just move around it during the course of the night when we can see them. The moon is something that I can observe on a daily basis. I can see the moon rise sometime during the day. I might see it during the day, or sometimes I can see it uh, at night as well, so this is the example I can see it during the day. And, and again, the moon will rise just like the sun in the east and set in the west. And on some time, sometimes when I see it, I'll see more or less of the face lit. So it goes through phases, but it's something I can observe on a daily basis. Uh, something else I can observe during uh, most days, or, or at least one planet up in the sky at night. Uh, so here you can see some planets, well, you barely see them, but they're these bright, they look like stars, actually. And it's hard to tell the difference between a planet and a star just by looking, but one thing that you can do is if you stare at a planet for a long time, if it doesn't twinkle, it's a good indication that it's a planet rather than a star. And planets seem to uh, line up nicely in the sky all along the same line. And that line in the sky is called the ecliptic. And that's something that I can observe. If I was a careful observer, I could see that the planets don't quite move with the background stars, that they, they seem to wander. And in fact, that's where the word planet, that's where the word comes from, is that they're wanderers, that they move with respect to the background stars. And I might be able to observe that. Now, I said these cycles were regular. But they might also change on a seasonal basis. So for example, the length of the day changes. Um, here we are in Las Vegas, and it's at a latitude of about 36 degrees north. And so here's a, a plot of the length of the day versus the, the, de the month of the year. And you can see that the, the length of the day will change. And in fact, it, if you're on the equator, it's always 12 hours long. But if you move uh, so more towards the north, like in Las Vegas, 
then the, the day will become longer and shorter during the course of the year. Uh, furthermore, the position of the sun changes. So I said before that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, well, and, and that was what Romeo's argument was to Julia, right? But that's not entirely the case. Um, the sun only rises in the east and sets in the west on certain days of the year. In fact, only two days, and those days are the equinoxes. Otherwise, the position of the sun when it rises along the horizon is different. So, this photo somebody took of the sun, they took a photo of the sun every day at the same time. Well, maybe not quite every day. There are 365 little suns there, but maybe every 10 days or so, they took a photo of the sun, and it traces out this really interesting pattern in the sky. That pattern is called an analemma, just for your information, and um, it changes, its shape changes slightly depending upon where your latitude is. Well, the stars, the, the movement of the stars can change on a seasonal basis as well. So this is a nice photo. This was on an astronomy picture of the day yesterday, and it shows a nice frosty leaf in the foreground with the constellation Orion. You can see the bright red star of Betelgeuse up in his shoulder there. And Orion always indicated to me that uh, winter was coming. I grew up in Wisconsin, and so time, you know, if you saw Orion up in the sky, you knew it was going to be cold out. And um, that's the bundle up. Uh, the moon sort of has its own periodicity to it. So the moon phases occur. Uh, it takes about one month to go th uh, through the entire. Uh, all of the phases. So it goes from crescent, and when it, the, the light of the moon or the face of the moon grows, that's called waxing, to full moon, and then back to, to crescent when the moon is waning. And the moon phases are correlated with when the moon rises and sets. So I know, for example, that a full moon will always rise at dusk and set at dawn, whereas a first quarter moon will always rise at noon and set at midnight. And that's this is kind of neat. If I, uh, someone here has taken a picture of the moon each, I guess each night or day when it was visible, and you can see that the moon, its face changes or librates um, through the course of one lunation. It seems to move a little bit closer and nod and wiggle as it goes around. So all these things are, I can observe. And going back to the planets then, if I look at the planet and take a, and observe it every night, I'll notice in general that it moves eastward with respect to the background stars. Um, and again, that's why they call planets wanderers. But if I look at, well this is a, a photograph, or um, a composite photograph of the planet Mars. And here you can see that Mars, for the most part, will move eastward with respect to the background stars. But at certain times of the year, about every two years actually, um, for about two months, it moves backwards or westward with respect to the background stars. And all of these motions are caused by the fact that we're on a planet that moves. And that may be combined with the fact that the other planets in the solar system move. So what about Earth's motion? What type of motions does it have? Well, the Earth rotates. All right? So it rotates. If you're looking from the North Pole, it rotates counterclockwise, as seen from the North Pole. And it takes 24 hours for it to go around once, thus explaining the fact that the, everything, including the sun and everything else, rises once per day in the east and sets once per day in the west. Furthermore, it revolves. So it goes around the sun. It takes 365.25 days for it to do that. And this can explain the reason why we see different constellations during different times of the year. So for example, here you see the planet in its orbit. And uh, at this time of the year, we maybe could only see the stars. So during the daytime, we'll be looking in this direction and see the sun in the sky, and at night we can look out in that direction and see those constellations. Whereas if the, the Earth is over here during the day, these constellations are blocked, and the ones over here are the ones that we'll be able to see. And so we can explain the, the seasonal change of constellation based on that.